Clinton dies mysteriously, his friends and family don't buy the official verdict, so they launch an investigation and begin to suspect that he was killed to bury a potentially explosive secret. Bernard Goldberg has been looking into this case, and he has more on it. Bernie? Connie, the motto of the Marine Corps is Semper Fidelis, always faithful. But today, as far as the family of Colonel James Sabo is concerned, that motto is a joke. Colonel James Sabo was the kind of Marine you'd find on a recruiting poster. A Vietnam hero, an ace jet pilot, rows of medals. Jim Sabre was my best friend, and he was my mentor when I was on active duty in the Marine Corps. He was uh, an individual who I trusted completely. Bill Callahan knew Jim Sabo for 17 years. He's the kind of guy when uh, things got going bad that you could depend on and turn to to take care of the things that needed to be taken care of. Then one morning, two years ago, they found James Sabo at home at the El Toro Marine Base in Southern California in his bathrobe, dead. Mercy One bullet through his head, fired into his mouth. The military said it was suicide. He said goodbye, Sal, like he always did. I kissed him goodbye, and uh, I left. Um, and then I came back and uh, walked in the house and found him in the backyard. Sally Sabo, his widow, had gone to church that morning, as she did almost every morning. Did he appear suicidal? No, not at all, because he was functioning in his uh, usual manner. Got up and took a shower, had his two cups of coffee, was watching television. If I thought he was in any way very depressed or suicidal, I would have never left him. The straightforward answer at this point is, your father killed himself. That's the official military conclusion. Do you believe it? No, I personally do not. Deidre? No. Mrs. Sabo? No, I don't believe it. I still can't comprehend it. And instead of getting more realistic, it seems more impossible every day. There was no suicide note, but more troubling than that, there was no fingerprint on the shotgun lying next to Colonel Sabo's body. If you shoot yourself, are you going to leave a fingerprint on some part of the gun? On one part of the gun, yes, sir. Sergeant Randy Robinson was one of the first investigators to arrive at the scene. He would have to pull the trigger with his finger. He would have had to help the barrel with his hand. There would be fingerprints on the gun, yes. But military investigators from the Navy and the Marines said there's a reason Colonel Sabo's fingerprints were not on the gun. The heat from the shotgun blast, they said, melted them away. Utter BS. Utter BS. If you're not wearing gloves, you're going to leave a fingerprint on a firearm. Your hands secrete oils and, and salt and everything else, and there's going to be a fingerprint on that gun unless you are wearing gloves. And Colonel Sabo was not wearing gloves when I observed him. But there was one possible motive for suicide. Colonel James Sabo, the Marine Corps straight-as-an-arrow hero, was under investigation for using a military airplane to haul personal items to his son in Washington State. Stereo speakers, posters, and a clock. The Marines wanted him to resign. If all of the naval aviators in the Navy and the Marine Corps were put to the same standards as Colonel Sable was, probably 92% of those would be uh, charged with the same offense. That's how common it is? Very common. Very common. Is that the kind of thing your best friend would have killed himself over? Absolutely not. In fact, Bill Callahan says Colonel Sabo had told him he thought the charges were so petty he would fight them at a court-martial, which is one reason so many people don't buy the suicide scenario. So in the beginning, you thought it was a suicide? It generally turns out that way, so I didn't expect anything else. Gene Wheaton was in the military for 30 years. Now he's been hired by the Sabo family to investigate the colonel's death. And he doesn't believe it was suicide either. The trajectory of the shotgun blast would have almost required the colonel to be a contortionist to have fired the shotgun uh, himself. That means he would have held, had to have held the shotgun at an angle uh, of such distorted proportions that it would have been almost physically impossible for him to discharge the shotgun. 
But if it wasn't suicide, there could only be one possibility, murder. And that's exactly what his friends and family believed it was, cold-blooded murder. And as far-fetched as it may sound, they believe Colonel Sable was killed by one or more people from the United States military, not just to ensure his silence about the improper use of military airplanes, but to make sure he never talked about something far more sinister than that, about what they said was a secret connection between the United States Marines and international drug smugglers. Are you telling me that drugs were being flown into U.S. military bases? Yes, sir. By? By covert operators who were flying weapons south into Central and South America, and they were protected on their return flights from customs inspections. If Colonel Sable was murdered, he would have had to have known about the covert flights that were going south with the weapons and the covert flights that were coming back with the drugs and laundered drug money. And to Gene Wheaton, this is where Colonel Sabo's decision to fight the charge of improperly using a military airplane becomes crucial. He was going to demand a court-martial which would publicly bring out the total covert operations that were going on in the military. So what you're saying is that somebody was afraid that if he went to court-martial, information would come out that there were drugs being brought up from Central and South America into the United States via military air bases. And in order to shut him up, somebody killed him. That's what you're saying. I'm saying if we prove a murder case, that's exactly it. But in order to believe that Colonel Sabo was killed because he knew about secret drug operations in the military, you have to believe what is virtually unbelievable, that there were in fact secret drug operations sanctioned by agents working for the United States government. Sound crazy? You're a pilot. Right. Well, that's exactly what this man, Tosh Plumley, says happened. He's a former army captain who says he was flying drug planes into this country as a civilian, performing covert operations for the CIA and other government agencies. And you were flying planes from? From Central America into the San Diego area, as well as the Southern Florida area as well as New Orleans area. Did you ever fly into a military base? I flew into three separate military bases that I recall. One was Homestead Air Force Base. This was with 1,200 kilos of cocaine. The other one was Laguna, which was a drop. Uh, that's 500 kilos of cocaine. Plumley says he was paid up to $5,000 a flight, and he says he told all this to Senate investigators, in secret and under oath. Sources in Washington confirm this. This is the first time he's ever spoken on television. You're flying cocaine? We're flying cocaine. From Central America into military bases in the United States? Large quantities of cocaine. We would uh, sometimes get our aircraft out of Southern California, Palomar, China Lake, 20, outside 29 Palms. These are all military these bases? These are all military bases. Sometimes these aircraft would be civilian aircraft. Sometimes these aircraft would be military aircraft. Plumley says he was told the flights were part of a sting operation designed to get information on drug smugglers and then bust them. They never went in and did one thing. That's when a lot of pilots began to turn. That's when a lot of pilots began to say, what in the hell is happening here? And Plumley says he came to believe that U.S. agents were using the profits from drug smuggling to buy weapons to sell to armies south of the border, a theory shared by investigator Wheaton. They not only supply friendly forces, they supply the enemy, too. This is a business for them. Maybe I'm naive, but th this sounds crazy, right? Well, so did Iran-Contra until it became public. Plumley says he never flew drugs into the El Toro Marine Base in California, where Colonel Sabo was third in command. And he says he knows nothing of Colonel Sabo's death. Does it sound believable to you that if a high-ranking Marine knew something about covert operations and somebody was afraid he might go public with it, is it plausible that somebody might try to kill him? Well, to me, yes, it would be extremely, I mean, it would really be plausible. What do you think happened to your brother? I think my brother was murdered. Cold-blooded murder. Cold-blooded, calculated, premeditated murder. David Sabo is a neurologist in South Dakota. James Sabo was his younger brother. Dr. Sabo, who is recovering from a broken hip, says the Sabo family has spent more than $100,000 on the investigation to find out what really happened to his brother. You know, doctor, if we believe this, 
I mean, we have to then believe a lot of other things that are hard to believe. That the killer, if he was killed, was probably somebody who was saluted. Probably somebody in the military. Well, there's no question about it. There was, uh, uh, there was absolutely no question. There's no question in my mind that this was ordered by the military. It was carried out by the military. He was set up.